Hello, I'm extremely happy to be here. I consider myself a Chavonera. We are in Chavon, so I'm super happy to be here. I'm going to tell you a story, as everybody else did, and the best story I know, it's my story. So it's a story from luxury to real luxury, and you will understand why. So I started my career um, having, uh, uh, first I went to Los Angeles, I worked uh, in the film industry, and then I had a chance, my family was in the textile industry, actually I'm dedicating this TED talk to my father, Rudy, who's sitting here tonight, and he's the best father in the world. <laughs> So I had a fantastic chance, and I had my own collection, and I had a great time. We did shows twice a year, we had shops, and it was really uh, creatively a fantastic, fantastic journey. So I had also the chance to work with amazing photographers when they were at the beginning of their careers, so I could afford them. So my first photo shoot was David, was David LaChapelle, I worked with Mario Testino, Javier Valorra, Enrique Badulescu, and many others. And so I had a, a fantastic chance to recognize talent when it was starting out, and I still do that. And I'll explain this with these beautiful mannequins that I have behind me. I also worked in the real luxury world. So I've been a senior design consultant for Ferragamo, Prada, Miu Miu, and then if you can actually see the dates, there's a gap between 2007 and 2017. Doesn't look good on a curriculum, but it was a good gap for me because I got to a point when I was working for a massive, massive luxury firm and we were discussing the length of a skirt for three hours. They're like, I can't do this anymore. Sorry, <laughs> gotta get out of here. I needed to do something that belonged to me. I needed to do something good for the environment and for the people, and I knew there was a lot of good to be done in the fashion industry. So I did something that I suggest everybody does, which is ask the cosmic energy. She will answer eventually. So I asked and asked and asked, please let me do something that will resonate with me, resonate with my ideals. Let me do good through what I know how to do. And it happened. So my life turned into this, which was and is the joy of my life, which is working with artisans all over the world. I became the creative director of the biggest fair trade organization in Europe, and I was traveling the world, working with all these amazing people. A lot of them, especially in Nepal, were social entrepreneurs. Social entrepreneurs do something that I find is brilliant, and it's somewhere between capitalism and pure communism, which is they do business, they do it fairly, they pay the right amount to workers, they don't pollute, but then they dedicate a part of their profits to make the community a better place. So some of them had schools for uh, street children, others started microcredit uh, for the artisans, and I was keeping meet, you know, keep on meeting these heroes and these amazing, amazing people. So my heart was and is so happy when I get a chance to meet people like this. This is a beautiful project I did in Tanzania, in the north of Tanzania, where the Maasai women, because they're so poor, they cut every shrub and every tree around their villages so they can turn them into green charcoal that then they sell at the market. So this NGO from Italy that operates in that area was kind of thinking, how do we stop this? This is desertifying completely. And they realized that all the Maasai have sheep, they have goat, they have a few cows, and they sell them at the market. But the hide, the leather, gets chucked away. So they're like, wait a minute, what if we set up a little place where we can treat the leather we ask a designer, me, to design a beautiful, you know, line of bags and accessories, and so we did. And the community stopped cutting trees and actually creating 
a cottage industry that gave money and skills to a lot of people in Tanzania. And the Masai are one of the most amazing people and fun to be with. So the word got around and a lot of brands started calling me to do collaborations in order to do, you know, something sustainable in their operations. So here is with Moschino, they wanted to do a collection that was inspired by Africa. So I sampled wax print materials in Ghana for them and we ended up buying 25,000 meters of this wax print. Or when Pinko called me, I was working at the time with Franca Sozzani, she was the director of Vogue Italia for 30 years, we were good friends, and Pinko wanted also to do something in Africa. So Frank and I worked for Fashion for Development, which is a UN organization that wants to bring development through fashion in emerging economies. And I decided to get inspired by population in the Omo Valley that do body painting. And from that body painting, I extrapolated these bags that have these lines on them. We brought the work to Ethiopia because we produced 45,000 bags in a small factory in Ethiopia that had to hire more and more people. And we also devolved money to the tribes that inspired us. And now, thank God, there's a lot of amazing startups. I had the fortune to work with this one, Studio 189. It's Rosario Dawson and her friend, the, the actress and activist, and her friend, Abri Merwa, who do this beautiful collection in Ghana. And also, again, again, through the UN, we work with them, we help them, we did the first show, and now they're up and running and doing fantastic. I work with the UN a lot. We did two projects in Egypt that were fantastic. One was with organic cotton, and the second year we did recycled denim pre-consumer fabric, recycled in yarn. What happens is in a cutting room, when you cut clothes, 15% of the fabric falls on the floor. So we decided that let's get that pristine fabric, there's nothing wrong with it, it's pre-consumer, and go through the recycling process and create a new yarn. So nothing gets wasted. That's part of my mission. For all of this, I got a very nice recognition at the UN, a prize, Women Together Award, in New York. My father was there, it was a beautiful moment. And they've also done a beautiful um, retrospective of all my best pieces at the most prestigious fair for yarns for designers in Florence. So I'm getting to all this because there is a pressure from Gen Z and Gen Y, so the millennial and the Z generation, because they really want the world to change. My kids, who are basically in this area, always come to us and to me and my husband and say, it's not fair. And I'm like, what's not fair? You lived in the 80s. And I'm like, yeah. And it says, and it was fun. I mean, you messed it all up for us. Now we have a world that's going to hell. And, you know, we will not buy things that are made in not a transparent way, that are made causing pain to people and the environment. So we have to address this, and this is our hope for the future. In this wave, there's a lot of sustainable designers that are sprouting up all over the world. They're doing fantastic creative things. This is an English designer, Bethany yeah. Williams. She basically cuts little strips of magazines, very colorful magazines, and then puts them on a loom and makes fabric out of them. And she does it in a place, there is this textile workshop, in a place that it's a community to recuperate kids that have drug abuse problems. So this is a, a social and uh, environmentally viable collection. Mosh Mosh is a beautiful collection from Peru. She works with artisans in Peru doing beautiful fabrics and doing something that I find brilliant, which is natural latex, and it's an alternative to leather. So it's basically the rubber that comes down from the trees. She then puts it on these sheets of organic cotton and they glue together above big fires where they get smoked. So this for me, it's fascinating. My husband and I have a dream, which is to do this 
project called Fashion with a Mission, where we go and film all these beautiful new designers and we document their relationship with the tradition of their country. So artisans and designers creating this synergy that is working beautifully. Nuse Tudion is a beautiful brand from uh, Argentina, and they also do a, a leather-like material that is called kombucha, and it's made by fermentating tea, yeast, and sugar. And you get this gel that then dries down and it looks like leather. And nobody got killed and uh, it's biodegradable. Chain is another beautiful collection from Argentina, all in organic fabrics. But you might ask, all these beautiful brands, where can they sell? I mean, it's like a beautiful exercise of style. They're sustainable, but who's going to sell them? So, Startups like the Canvas in New York are amazing places. This kid that you see in the middle there with his partner, David Gilmartin, has started this profit-sharing idea, which is, he noticed in New York, in Manhattan, and in Brooklyn, all these commercial spaces that were empty. And he went to the landlord and said, listen, you're not doing anything with this space. Give it to me. I'll fix it. I'll put in designers from all over the world that are sustainable. And then we do a, a profit sharing. We're not going to pay rent, but everything we sell, you'll get a portion of it. So we'll get the canvas and so we'll get the designers. So there's new ways that are opening up for these new designers. And the sky is the limit, literally. So I really believe in education. I'm a professor and I've taught in many, many very important uh, institutions among which, of course, Chavon School of Design. And I'm very happy to say that this week we did a um, workshop here in Chavon where the students were asked to buy shirts, secondhand shirts, men's shirts, and to come up with beautiful creations by disassembling these men's shirts and coming up with incredibly creative ideas. So we did this in two and a half days, which to me, is absolutely fantastic. These are my students. These are the real Gen Z. They're going to save us. One last thing. I also represent a movement called Fashion Revolution. Fashion Revolution was born on the 24th of April, 2013, when an industrial complex collapsed in Bangladesh, causing 1,138 deaths and many, many uh, injuries. So this movement started in London from Orso de Castro and Carrie Somers. Our hashtag is, who made my clothes? So we ask justice for the 17 million garment workers that work today in the world, of which mostly are women and mostly get paid below the poverty line. When mother and father don't get paid enough and don't bring dinner home, the kids have to go to work. So unfair payment and the refusal of the payment of a living wage is the cause of child labor. So what I'm saying is that there's so much to do. And every day I, I do events, I talk, I teach, I design, everything I do is because I think fashion could become an example of sustainability, an example of fairness. And I will leave you with a video of Fashion Revolution, which has won many awards, and it sums it all.
Thank you. So we can all start a revolution today, right now, and find the true luxury, which is working fairly, respecting people and environment. Thank you very much.